targeting the super rich, Prestige is a pawnbroker with a difference. Supercars, jewellery, watches, fine wines, art, almost anything of value. If it's expensive, we want it. You're probably looking at about a quarter of a million. We're rich! Based in affluent Surrey... I'm hoping to get about £40,000 for it. ..and London's Diamond Quarter... The treasure trove, look! ..they deal exclusively in luxury goods. Are you looking at 45000 I think we need some champagne. She's looking for 40000 She's talking in pounds or rupees. <laughs> This time, a mysterious treasure chest excites the team. If we can prove a royal connection, the value's going to go through the ceiling. A deal on a barge leaves James stranded. Why is the smoke coming up? Slight mechanical hitch. Help! And the pawn shop takes on its most unusual item yet. Bloody hell. You don't see that every day. Oh, my God. It's immense. Welcome to the world of posh porn. Good morning. Well, what have you got today? I've got a big collection of banknotes. It's a very pretty ring. Love it. This pawnbroker will lend money on virtually anything of value. Spitfire market's going crazy. They make four million quid now. But the greater the price... Happy to present you with an offer of 100 grand. Whoa! The greater the risk... It's two million quid. I don't know, nearly. that's not... So how much? This potentially could be disastrous if I get this wrong. Pawnbroking can be a risky business. Every item we take in, we don't know whether it's going to be fake or real, and that's the chance we take. It's <laughs> not right, I'm afraid. For owner James Constantino, it's become a way of life. Oh, my God! I absolutely love the buzz associated with a risky item, especially if it's high-end. That's absolutely amazing. That is incredible. James has always taken risks, calculated risks. When someone says you can't, I like to prove them wrong. I don't see that stopping now. <laughs> Now he's taken on his biggest challenge to date. It's looking great, isn't it? Cheers, James. Cheers. Launching a flagship store in the heart of London's jewellery quarter. Prestige. People thought I was mad coming to Hatton Garden. I'm in amongst the hustle and bustle of the jewellery quarter, but I really, really want to prove my worth. James must be feeling the pressure. You'd be crazy not to. Business is about taking risks, and there's no exception when it comes to pawnbroking. It really is a risky business. Hatton Garden doesn't work out. Everything is at stake. We could potentially go bust. It's the opening week of the new Hatton Garden store, and James is about to deal with one of his first client inquiries. James will be able to help you. Lady with some jewellery. OK. And what else have we got? Cheers, Joe. Thanks. Bye. She's going to pop down and see her, so her name's Joe. Lovely name. <laughs> She's got a couple of watches and a diamond ring. Says the diamond ring's got three stones of two carat each. Oh, that'd be good then. The owner of the jewellery is Windsor businesswoman Jo. I am a sun worshipper, hence I own a sunbed shop. A spray tan at five o'clock. It's a social place. People come in to have a chat. Just met a man and our third date, fancy dress party, ended up staying in a tent. <laughs> <laughs> Jo believes the secret to her eight years of success at the salon lies in her technique. I honestly think you've either got the talent to spray tan or you haven't. You've either got the knack or you haven't. You want to face the other side for me, darling, please? Obviously, it's not like spraying a car because it's a person. I've sprayed an 84-year-old lady. But what colour do you want to go, Danny? We're going to go quite dark? Yeah. I've sprayed a five-year-old child at a party. I've sprayed a seven-foot man. You name it, I've probably sprayed it. <laughs> Let it rub against the side. It's a fantastic little business. But the recent breakup of a long-term relationship has led Jo to reflect on her life. I'm not getting any younger. Um, I've got no children, so I haven't got any responsibilities in that department. I used to live in Spain and I've always had that passion to go back to Spain. Jo wants to move forward with her new plan and buy a dream house abroad. She's keen to get her friend's opinion on potential properties. That'll work out about 300 English. It's around a five bedroom, it's got a pool. The problem is I don't at the moment want to get too excited or, or find something that is perfect when I haven't got financial backing. I loved it, I fell in love with it when I went in June. It's Places. perfect. It's lovely, yeah. But selling her business won't be enough to fund a new life abroad, and Joe's pinning her hopes on some jewellery to turn her dream into a reality. My watch, my Patek Philippe watch, it's my pride and joy, actually. I never take it off. It was a great buy. Um, I paid sort of £500 for the watch for a family member who needed the money at the time. I offered her something silly, and she took it. 
the exclusive designer watch won't raise the funds alone. So to help out, Jo's mum, Anne, has decided to support her by giving her a family heirloom to pawn. Right. Nan's ring. OK. That's the one. How are you feeling about this? <laughs> it's, it's good. I'm good with it. It's going to give you a new start. It is obviously sentimental, cos it was, it was left to me by my mother. It means a lot giving this ring to Jo, but I feel it's the right time to do it. If I had children, it'd be a different story, wouldn't it? Emotional. <laughs> I can't even tell you how much I appreciate it. I love you so much. If I could walk away with £20,000, that would give me the deposit I need. That would give me enough at the moment. With the greatest concentration of jewellery shops in the UK, competition is tough for the new Hatton Garden store. We're in Hatton Garden and we're in Richmond and we're in Weybridge. What do you think of that big bad boy? Yeah, it's nice, really nice. People thought I was absolutely crazy opening up in Hatton Garden. Good morning, Prestige, Hatton Garden. We're new kids on the block and we've got a lot to prove. To ensure success, James needs to guarantee that his business stands out from the crowd and he's received an email inquiry that could help him do just that. It's a reproduction gothic suit of armour. Oh, my God! Reproduction isn't worth much, is it? Well, the real one could be hundreds of thousands of pounds. Love to see you sell that. Be intrigued how you find a buyer for that. It was just interesting, isn't it? When I first saw the armour, it was a real challenge to me. I know Joe was very sceptical, but I just had to take it on. North Wales. Home to the owner of the suit of armour, Rob. I've been working on cars since about seven or eight, helping my dad in the garage, uh, driving him mad usually. Rob makes a living out of his passion for cars, repairing and restoring them. Hi, Mr. Stevens. Your 411 should be ready for our day. Seven years ago, it was a job which made him wealthy. We had a full staff. We're turning over anything from 12 to 20 or so cars a week. I made most of my money by doing insurance work on the vehicles for the main dealers. Rob's success meant he could enjoy the high life. Yeah, I was a millionaire on paper, nearly enough. This is my Bentley. You know, lovely big boat. This is my 430 Ferrari. I've never been a saver, cos I think he could be dead tomorrow. Rob's estate included an 18th century mansion. It was my dream house. When I saw the house, I fell in love with it. I had a good standard of life. Spend a couple of grand in about 10 minutes. But as the recession hit, the business took a nosedive. It all went wrong. Oof. Probably, I'd say, about 2008. People not spending money. I lost a few contracts, went over my overdraft limit, and I just couldn't carry on, you know. I lost my mum and dad in 07. I was really close to them. That was the biggest wrench. I think from there, really, maybe things just started to spiral down quick. I lost my fight as well. Because of his problems, Rob has had to downsize to living in a static caravan. They say every Englishman's home is his castle. Well, this is mine. Life at the moment is tough. It's, I'm just existing at the moment. The kitchen, uh, it doesn't quite compare to the kitchen I used to have. Bathroom, the gold taps. It's adequate, but it's bloody cold. Losing everything has made Rob realise what's important in life. I don't want a fancy house anymore and all the toys. I just want this cottage that could be on the river. I need to raise about between 60 and 70,000. To do that, he's come up with a cunning plan. He's going to pawn the only remaining indulgence from his former life. A made-to-measure suit of armour with accompanying Napoleonic horse kitted out ready for battle. Since I was a child, I've always been fascinated uh, with medieval uh, suits of armour. I had it commissioned by a famous armourer from Lincolnshire. It took him about a year and I had to go down about three times for fittings because it actually fits me. Ah! Oh. I feel like Houdini. I paid 15000 for the suit and the horse. I'm hoping to raise about 3000 but oh! <laughs> it'll be worth a lot more than that. So I would accept for praying James can sell it for me. I'm going to be buried in it if he doesn't. So can James come to the rescue and find a buyer for Rob? 
Hatton Garden has been the centre of London's jewellery quarter since medieval times. It's the perfect place for pawn shop boss James Constantino to set up his new store. Good afternoon, Christine. So I got your email about the six to eight hundred quid for Cary Grant's pyjamas. One of the main major benefits of being in Hatton Garden, of course, is you attract very high-end pieces, which bring along with them high-end clients, which eight equals high-end loans. We've obviously got taste. It's a beautiful ring. <laughs> Thank you. And they said it's actually priceless. But to cope with the increase in demand, there's a need for new staff. We've now got Olga on board, and she's uh, the manager of uh, the Hatton Garden store. She's doing a great job. It's been very difficult for her to come on board with all our different things that we deal with. This job is completely different from what I used to do. To be honest, I am enjoying myself. Oh, can I just hold yeah, it? Yeah, hold it, yes. There are also new systems in place. Still not connecting. Uh, go away a minute. And changes affecting the whole team. Since Hatton Garden opened, basically all the staff become nomads travelling between each branch, so I'm really enjoying it. It's early afternoon and Lawrence is working at the Weybridge shop. An email inquiry has caught his eye. This is quite interesting, j -Mo. I've got an email from a lady about um, an antique chest belonging to Queen Victoria. Really? Yeah. Come and look at this. It's actually quite nice. It's got some documentation here as well. Look at this. It's allegedly a present from Garrard to the Queen and his Royal Highness Prince Albert. Yeah. Wow. Could be worth quite a bit, that, actually. Especially if the actual uh, provenance actually does link them back to Queen Victoria. That'd be interesting, that. Huh? Yeah, so what I'll do is get her to actually bring the chest up here. I'd like to see that in the flesh. The Royal Chest belongs to businesswoman Katie. It looks like a payment's coming for $115,000. Who lives in Kent with her partner, Adrian. Yep, I've got you here. OK. Um, Together, they run an insurance business from home and are looking to expand. Right now, this company could do with an injection of cash of around £40,000. That would mean bigger offices and a slicker system to work with. Katie is hoping to raise the money to invest in her business by selling a wooden chest bought by her late father, Rudy, when she was just a little girl. My dad was a Swiss man, handsome, fit, a little bit crazy, total adventurer, such a surprising chap. He's here wearing Lord Montgomery's uniform and the reason for that is for a little while he was um, personal chef and cook to Lord Montgomery. Towards the end of his colourful life, Rudy moved to Kent and opened an antique shop. He could pick up a, a grandfather clock in the morning for £12 and sell it that afternoon for £3,000. So I'm really, really hoping that this could be one of those purchases. It's got to, got to, got to be real. I think the chest was a gift to Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. Where would you find that to stick that on there in the first place? Possibly a wedding gift from Garrard's the jewellers, who are the jewellers to the royal family. And if you open it, the lock. The lock looks like a... The lock's got a royal seal on it, it as well. looks like it, doesn't it? I don't know if this is going to turn out to be a treasure chest for me or just an old chest, but I'm really hoping that the pawn shop can unlock that mystery for us. Antiques enthusiast Lawrence is the man for the job, and he's asked Katie to bring the chest into Weybridge so he can start his detective work. Hello. There's not a diamond in there. No. It's Katie, it's isn't it? We spoke on the phone. Right, yeah. Well, it's a beast, isn't it? It is a bit of a beast. When I first saw the wooden chest, I was really impressed, but almost straight away, I'd better shed some light on it. What it's actually saying to you is Garrard's, yep. goldsmiths and silversmiths and jewellers, yep. to the Queen. Oh, I see. You've got a present that she commissioned for her cousin, Prince George, Duke of Cambridge. Right. I'd never have put that together that's, myself, that's ever. That's how it reads. So, you've still got potential, a very nice, valuable item. Excellent. I mean, at the end of the day, what are you looking, you're looking to sell it? I would sell it if I got what I felt it was worth. Go on, tell me. I it's don't worth. know what it's worth. No. I certainly wouldn't part with it for two or three thousand. I think it could get upwards from forty thousand to forty thousand or more. Okay, so if we're looking for say forty thousand plus, what you're looking for? Oh. You know, I think I think it's a lovely piece. Mm. Um, we're going to have to look into it further. Brilliant. Well, lovely to meet you. Thank you. Look after yourself. And look after the chest. It will be looked after wonderfully, don't Thank you, you worry. Lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Any chance for a lift with this? To me, 
to me. I have quite an awful lot of confidence in, in um, Lawrence, actually, because he's, he's pointed something out that nobody ever put together. Yeah, I've got confidence that he'll find out one way or the other if it's worth something, if it's authentic. Oh, because they were the Crown Jewelers, weren't they? That's right. Mm. If we can prove a royal connection, then obviously the value is going to go through the ceiling. Good morning, Prestige. It's two weeks since the new store opened. It doesn't want to sell it, wants to loan against it. And business is booming. Good afternoon. How can I help you? When you first open, obviously, it's a little bit worrying, not knowing who's going to come through the door. Right, let's have a look. We're actually settling in now and we're starting to enjoy it. But I'd need at least half hour to do some work on them. OK, I'll take that in. Today, James is in the Weybridge shop and has just received a call from someone looking to get a loan against their narrow boat. Sounds like quite a thing, 55 foot long, it's uh, quite a beast. I like to pride myself on the fact that I will almost loan against anything. And when the barge come in, I must admit, I did feel a little bit out of my comfort zone. Potentially, I think he's looking to raise 25 grand, but I think the thing's worth a lot more. I think we've got figures here of perhaps 70, 80 grand. Hopefully the sun will be shining and we'll get up there and have a little look at it and uh, we'll go from there. The client needs money fast, so James gets straight on the road. But the prospect of a big loan is possibly more enticing than the barge itself. I mean, I don't do canal boats, generally. I saw the email come in and I saw boat and I thought, oh, this would be a bit of fun. You know, I had visions of me on the top deck, sort of sipping a pina colada or a uh, Pims or something. You know, and then I saw barge. The boat is owned by 47-year-old Richard, who's looking for a loan of £25,000. You must be James. Hi, Richard. Hi, pleased How to meet you. Yeah, very good. Thanks for coming. No problem. I see you bought your brolly. Yeah, I've got my brolly. I'm fully equipped, as you can see. I'm in the seafaring mode. <laughs> yeah, your wet weather gear's great. Let's get inside and Come have in a look. Come in this way. This is the bedroom. Very good. I can see why it's called a narrow boat now. When I boarded the barge and saw how wonderful it was inside, I could actually see myself in there at the weekend, and I thought this would actually suit someone. There must be some money in this. Are we going to uh, fire her up? Yeah. Life on the open seas. <laughs> <laughs> Am I doing all right? You're doing, you're doing absolutely brilliantly. I've got it down to fine art now. Yeah, yeah. It's all in the wrist. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> when I was at the helm of the barge, it was all very relaxing. I was getting into it and I was quite chilled out. But unfortunately, it was just about to change. A bit worried about that temperature, actually. Mate. Yeah, that's not good, mate. Probably haven't moved it for a while. No, I haven't, no. Not for six months. I should check the radiator. Slight mechanical hitch. Got a little bit warm. He's down there now having a little rummage. I would help out, but um, it's not really my bag, you know. I'm better suited just up here, just keeping a lookout. There's no water in the radiator, and there's a tap over there. And I was wondering if you'd do the. Um... Of course I will. Thank I'll you. be glad to be of use. It wasn't great for Richard. He'd got me down there to inspect it, and it wasn't really up to scratch. From his point of view, it wasn't a great start. I'm not used to this. My shoes are all damp. I'm late, I've got to get back to Surrey. I've got a client to meet in about half an hour. This is why I prefer Ferraris. You've got my full support. But you're walking? Uh, yes. <laughs> OK. Oh, no. <laughs> this is the Islington Tunnel, which is one of the longest tunnels in the country. Looks like quite a feat of engineering. Yeah, it's quite something, isn't it? Is it going all right? No, it's not. I'd do almost anything for money, but breaking down in the middle of that tunnel in a half-working barge was ridiculous, and I thought, was it worth it? Help! Rog, hello, mate. I'm stuck in the middle of a tunnel on a barge, broken down, overheated, stinking of diesel with wet feet. Turn up, mate. Thankfully, there were some fellow barging pensioners that came to our rescue. They threw us a tow line and pulled us out of the tunnel to safety. I feel like I'm on a gondola in Venice. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Just keep it straight now, just keep it straight. It all became quite surreal to me. <laughs> he started off. There were people on the bank laughing at us as we were towed along. Hey, hold on a minute. I'm actually not going to look around. I might even pretend it still works. <laughs> I 
had a lot to think about and a lot of decisions to make, and I needed really to go back to the office to sort it all out. I needed to come down and have a look, and I'm sure you'll get that sorted. Cheers, mate. Great, thanks Thank a lot you. for your help. See Cheers. You. Cheers, James. Bye. The business may be used to dealing with unusual items, but James's hope for the new store is to attract high-end jewellery. Good afternoon, sir. How can I help you? I have a few pieces. It says Italy, 750, presumed to be 18 karat gold. OK, great. I mean, James has set up in Hatton Garden because this really is the centre of the diamond business and the jewellery trade. One client hoping her jewellery is top-end is Sunbed owner Joe. Hello. Beautiful day, isn't it? Shall I come round and have a look? She's looking to raise money to start a new life in Spain. This is my nan's watch. We've got absolutely no idea of price or value or... Well, it's a vintage piece. Yeah. It's the old manual it's a wind. wind up. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not wind up, it's a watch. What? <laughs> and I've also got my Passe Philippe watch. Oh, lovely. Nice. Yeah. So is it a loan or selling? Selling. Selling? selling? I'll like show you what one. else I've got. So this is. Oh, that's a big boy, isn't it? I mean, when Joe came in and showed me the three items, I knew instantly the watches weren't going to get the money. It was all on the diamond ring. Right, the golden question. How much are you looking for? I'm looking at 20,000. Yeah. Obviously, but a really nice watch. Amiga, a good brand, and mm. a three stone dial ring, which is quite sizable. Yeah. So, what I want to do is look into it. Thank okay? you. I look forward to hearing and from you. I hope you get the figure you want, okay? So do I. Thank you so much. Cheers. It's a pleasure. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. I feel excited, but I also feel really nervous. My move to Spain really does depend on what I get for the jewellery. That's massively important. Also arriving at the pawn shop is a rather more unusual item, and it's causing quite a stir. Rob has made the journey down from North Wales with the armour so that James and his team can appraise it. Got me hand on the horse's pawn. It's absolutely madness. It is madness. Very nice. Very nice. Bloody hell. You don't okay. see that every day. Let's come and have a look at it. <laughs> well, that really is a beast, isn't it? It is. <laughs> well, we won't be getting that on the mantelpiece. No. <laughs> when the suit of armour and the horse came through the door, I was gobsmacked. I've never seen anything like it. And the size of it, it was an amazing piece of kit. You've impressed me. I love it. What sort of money are you looking for? It cost me 15 grand. Yeah. I'd like to get five upwards of a club. Five upwards. When Rob said that he wanted five grand for the suit of armour, my heart did sink slightly. But I thought, hell, let's just go for it. There must be someone out there who will pay for it. Bit of a wrench for you to have to sell it, isn't it? It is breaking my heart, but I'm basically starting again, and this is the yeah. last thing I've got. Well, obviously, have to leave it with me. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> and uh, I'll speak to you shortly. All right, Lawrence. Cheers, Rob. Thanks very much. Nice, nice to meet you. you. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Joe? Yeah? You've got to come and have a look at this. I can't wait to see James's face. <laughs> I knew my knight in shining armour would turn up one day. Oh, yes. When the suit of armour and the horse came through the door, I just could not believe my eyes. That is taking up a lot of space. You right. actually like it, don't you? I actually do like it very much. <laughs> oh, well, you enjoy and just get rid of it by the end of the week, all right? That's probably the most weirdest thing that's walked into a, a pawnbroker's, especially in London. It's priceless, priceless is reaction. <laughs> This is definitely the biggest thing we've ever had in the shop. By far, it's immense. It might be immense, but can they sell it? There might be somebody out there as crazy as me that might want to buy it. It's been three weeks since the new store opened. Yeah, Low prestige. Good. We've got gold and diamonds, 500 pounds for everything. And the staff are getting excited at the influx of luxury goods coming in. Joe, have a look. What do you think? Oh, wow. God. Oh, can I put these on? No, Joe, no. Oh. I think Joe's going to have to keep her hands to herself. She's like an octopus when we see these pieces. We've got a lot of people coming in from North London. It's a very high-end area. So, yeah, I'm expecting a lot of bags to come through here, and good quality ones as well. One object already in the shop waiting to be looked at is the life-size suit of armour and horse, and Lawrence is keen to get started on it. I love it. This is the sort of thing that really gets me excited. 
I'm going to make it my goal to actually sell this for Rob. After the initial excitement, we had to remember two things. One, it was a reproduction outfit. Secondly, it had been handmade for Rob. So we really had to start thinking outside the box. It's all well and good getting excited about these unusual items that come through the door, but it's not an easy task to get rid of something like that. It's a real challenge, but I'm up for it. With a big task ahead, Lawrence gets straight on the phone. Hello, my name's Lawrence. I work for a company called Prestige Pawnbrokers. I mean, I started off ringing people like armour companies, reenactment societies. Just wanted to be interested in a suit of armour. But it's unbelievably hard to try and explain this item over the phone. It really is one of those things you have to see to believe. When I show you the pictures from our showroom, you'll love it. Speak to you on Monday, Terry. Cheers, bye. Well, that's a bit like buses. You'd have nobody for ages, and now we've got two potential buyers of the suit of armour. So, uh, brilliant. Since we've been in the centre of Hatton Garden, a lot of people have obviously come in and trying to test us to see whether we know what well, a fake is, whether we're any good with diamonds, jewellery, etc. We couldn't sell them. Okay. And that's the problem. Okay. So they'd have to all be diamonds for us to even take them in. Getting an expert opinion is vital with high-end goods. Yeah, I mean, that is really crude engraving on there. The stones are pretty good colour. It's lovely. And the new store's location in London's jewellery district has meant there's a wealth of expertise for James to call upon. Lots of these little traders here and a network of individuals that have been here um, for many years and they're becoming very useful to the business in a way that we're not used to. And one expert has already made an impression. Shabir is a great guy. He fixes, polishes, cleans jewellery. He's a great man. He knows everyone in Hat Garden. He's in and out, doing all sorts of things for us. So we're working about nearly 13 carats. What makes me laugh is I'll get someone to spend a day working out the colour, the clarity, the value, and then I'll say to him, oh, Shabir, what do you think about that? And within two seconds, he'll give me a value, which is usually spot on to what we've worked out. Amazing. Yeah. What do you nice. think about that? And very good quality uh, diamond, quite clean. It's quite amazing. I think we're all pretty much in awe of the guy, and his knowledge is quite invaluable. James is keen to get Shabir's opinion on client Joe's jewellery, and so Lawrence heads over to his office for evaluation. Shabir is like the golem of Hatton Garden. What he doesn't know about diamonds isn't worth knowing. Hello, Shabir, mate. How are you? Hello. Good afternoon. How are you? Uh, good afternoon to you too, my friend. I've got a client, really nice lady, and she wants to have a b and in Spain, so I want to get as much money as possible. I just want to see what you think of that. I've got my own idea. I want to see what you think. Oh, this is this is a nice ring. I think it's uh, approximately about two carat. Okay, so we're looking uh, roughly about six about carat. About six carat, yeah, probably yeah. six carat. It's the colour. It's a little bit yellow. I think the colour, I think, is a H or J colour. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think of the cut? Uh, cut is a brilliant cut. And uh, this cut is easy to sell. Yeah. If it's the same colour or the same uh, same size, it'd be better yeah, price. Better. Right, I'll take that back to James. We'll have a yeah. little talk about it and then we'll get back to the client. Ah, well, good. everything's right about this ring. The size, the quality, it's the colour is the real problem. I really want to get to the 20,000 for Joe because she wants to start a new life in Spain. Now, it is getting there, but, you know, I'm, I am concerned we're going to actually get to the full money. Getting a value on diamonds is one thing, but valuing a 30-foot barge is quite another. James is in the Weybridge store researching the barge. It's not easy researching these things. They seem to be all over the place in terms of their value. But having never done a deal on such an item, it's proving difficult to value. You know, you can buy them for 20 grand, or you can buy them for 120 grand, so, like, it's not an easy thing. We don't have a barge expert sitting here on a daily basis, and there's not many buyers out there for those sorts of items at the moment. And as such, it became really, really difficult to appraise. Eventually, a call from a barge specialist gives James the information he needs to make a decision on the loan. If I can get 47 for it, that's OK, is it? Waiting on the outcome is owner Richard. He's hoping the barge has held its value despite its failings. I've asked James for £25,000. Obviously, there's a bit of a hitch yesterday. Uh, the engine overheated. I very much hope it doesn't affect his decision. Hello. Richard, it's James here. Oh, from hi, James, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you doing? 
Yeah, I'm good, thank you. You fully recovered? Just about. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a laugh, didn't we? It was an enjoyable afternoon. Thanks for coming out. Look, Richard, I've done some numbers. It's not an easy thing to appraise, as you know. In terms of uh, lending, the 25,000 um, is not going to be an issue. So I'm happy to present that figure to you. Great. Not a problem. and. It, it was a real pleasure meeting you, Richard. And we'll get the it was a pleasure meeting you too. We'll and get... then before it goes, we're going to have a little trip up, properly in the sunlight with a glass of champagne or something. That'd be absolutely. Just let me know. And we'll go and do that. That'd be lovely. Thank you, James. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Pleasure. Cheers. Bye. Bye. There is no problem with obviously lending the twenty-five thousand pounds. That's very good news. I'm very pleased. At the end of the day, the problem with Richard's narrowboat could be rectified, and that's why I could offer him the loan. Also looking to do a deal is Lawrence. He's taken client Katie's antique chest to Garrard, the makers of the piece, in the hope to get more information about its worth. It's become a bit of a mystery of this, and we've really struggled. So we really had no other option but to go to Garrard today and finally put this mystery to rest. Established since the early 18th century, Garrard is the official crown jeweler, and today he is meeting director of silver and special commissions, Jessica. Hello. Hello. Hi, how did you do? What do you think? Well, it's amazing, isn't it? It's just like something out of Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. <laughs> it's a classic strong box. It's for storing the family silver, but oh, right. not just any family in this yeah. case, as we can tell by the, the rather special plaque here, which says, His Royal Highness, the Duke of Cambridge. And I presume that this contained some of his items of tableware. I hear there's a label that is a Garrard label inside, so I'd love to see that. Fantastic. This is just the most lovely treasure chest. And this is the label that um, I was hoping to see. I mean, what was really reassuring was being told by Garrods themselves that my original thoughts, that it was, in fact, a gift from Queen Victoria to another member of the royal family. This particular chest contained two round dishes, six dessert stands, 24 gilt plates, so yeah. it's a very magnificent set and part of a much larger service. So you can imagine the scale of the tableware. The client has spoken to a dealer and he's sort of given a figure of about 100 grand. Oh, perhaps full of treasure. <laughs> Well, that's brilliant. Well, thank you very much. It's been really informative. After a detailed history lesson, Lawrence can be confident of the royal connection. But will that alone deliver the money Katie needs for her business? At the Hatton Garden Store, the horse and armour have become a bit of a tourist attraction. And boss James has arrived to see what all the fuss is about. Oh, my God. What the hell? <laughs> Shit. That's brilliant. James's reaction to the horse and armour was just like a kid in a sweet shop. That's fantastic. Look at that. I'm loving it. <laughs> you want to get on it, don't you? I'd love to get on that. It's a work of art. You get on it, then. Get in this. Get yourself all strapped do. up in this, look. I will do, when I ain't so busy. I'll tell you what, I'll sell that by the end of today. James and I actually had a bet on this one, 50 quid each and I really wanted to win it. To increase his chances, Lawrence has arranged a viewing with a potential buyer, a member of a reenactment society, but he's not there to meet them. Hiya, is uh, Lawrence and James about? I'm James, how are you? Hey, James. Right. We've come down to have a look at Oh, the good. Oh, great. I mean, I was gutted that I couldn't be here when the buyer arrived. It was James again taking over my sale. Thank God you're here, because this has been causing a bit of a stir up here, so I'm glad you've managed to come down. We supply armour to people who would actually physically use it on the field. All right, well, look, have a look round it and uh, let me know what you think. It's the sort of thing that I would put on. I unfortunately, it's a little bit on the small side for me. I would try it on, definitely. It may well be that if we do decide to take it, it'll be on a, a full-size horse jousting within the next few weeks. A lot of people out there that love this sort of stuff. Yeah, I don't think they're probably going to come in at the full six grand. I reckon they're going to try and bid me. The client who owns it has been very patient, and uh, it'd just be really nice to get this one away. I sort of like it, though. I actually quite like it in the shop. It all seems to work correctly. How are you getting on? That's not too bad yourself. What do you think, then? 
this. I don't know. <laughs> you love it. What sort of figure are we talking about? We really felt around the six grand mark would be a fair sort of figure for it. And that's everything. Not including Inclu the horse. That includes the horse, yeah. I think we can probably come up with an answer for you within 24 hours. Good. Great to meet you both. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Bye. Cheers. See you. See you again. There was a bet going on that Lawrence would be able to sell it before I did, but he's not here and I am. And if you snooze, you lose, unfortunately, in this game. Good morning, Prestige Hatton Garden. The first month at Prestige's flagship store in central London has gone well. Three stone diamond ring, two carrots each stone. So potentially that could be a good one, especially yes. if you like carrots. I prefer broccoli. I'll ask if she's got any broccoli then. Yeah, Some jewellery here. We're in it to win it. And client Rob's armour is still attracting interest in the shop window. Absolutely brilliant. Look at it. Everyone keeps stopping and have a look at it. It's all such a stir. Let's go over and see Joe. Joe, have you got a tin opener? No. <laughs> oh my god. Do you like it? Yeah, it's a shame you ain't got the rest on, because that actually really suits you. I've got a horrible feeling that James is starting to become very attached to the horse and armour. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to want to end up keeping that. I hope not. In the Weybridge branch, Lawrence is preparing to break the news to Katie about her royal chest. She's hoping to raise money for her business and has had her fingers crossed for a good result. My hopes are that Lawrence will phone me up and tell me that it's worth a small fortune. That's my hope. Um, and that way I can plough some more money into the business because it really needs it. Furniture is really not my thing. Um, but this strong box, I actually really quite like it. It's a real sort of Sherlock Holmes stuff for this. The Queen Victoria connection, the Prince George connection, the Garrard connection. But will the chest's provenance mean big money for Katie? Nervous. So, so ridiculously, madly nervous. OK. Oof. Hello. Hello, Katie. Hi, Lawrence. How are you? Really nervous. But excited. I am excited too, I think. What we have to do is obviously make sure we get it right with our research on it. So what we did on this particular occasion as a first, we took Chester Garrett to see what history they could have for us. Right. But Lady Garrett was really excited about it. I mean, I'm not a furniture expert. No. But when she started saying, yes, this belongs to Prince George, yes, it's a strong box, I got excited for you. Right. Because as you quite rightly thought at the time we discovered when she actually came into the shop, Yeah. That it obviously it was a garage chest, okay. um, and the fact it did belong to Prince George. Blimey! So that bit was all all correct. It really did belong to Prince George. Okay. So I suppose the all all important question now on the actual value of the item. I would be very happy to find out the actual okay. value of the item. I'm afraid it's quite disappointing. Is it? Yeah, it'd be looking about five hundred pounds. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, really? Even really with the royal connection. Oh, that's a shame. But at least you know now. It, it's good to know, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant to know. When I spoke to her on the phone, you could hear she was gutted and I was really disappointed for her. I have been pondering it and thinking, well, if it's a good outcome, absolutely wonderful. If it's not an outcome that would tempt me to sell it, then I get to keep it. And it was Garrard's, so, you know, or is. So, exactly. Um, so all of that is quite nice to know. I, I know that now, yeah. do you know what I mean? Well, thank you. Anyway, thank you for the opportunity of bringing it in to us. OK, Lawrence, Cheers, thank Katie. you for the call. You take care. Cheers. Bye bye. bye. So you gathered then. Um, yes, it's a Garrard's chest. Yes, it belonged to Prince George. And they'd probably give you 500 quid for it. <laughs> Without the Royal Connection, it'd be 200. But with the Royal Connection, it's 500. So the Royal Connection might double the money, but it's still what's going to be major money. The mystery's been solved, which is, you know, it's, it's lovely. I'm really not as disappointed as you'd imagine. In the Hatton Garden store, James has received a call from the potential buyers of the suit of armour. OK, thanks for your time. Cheers, bye. That's Mark, who popped down to see the armour, who I thought was going to come back with a really good offer. Unfortunately, He's not anywhere near what we need to be. Do you know what I'm going to do? What are you going to do? I'm actually going to buy it. You're going to buy I've got a to. horse with an armoured man on it? I've got to, Joe. 
For what reason? I need one. When you say you're buying it, what's going through me is the fact that it's going to stay there, taking up all that. I oh, know, but it's an half look good there. Let's face it. I cannot believe that James has decided to buy that horse and armour, and I don't mean for putting in his garden or his house, to stay there in the shop front. And I really hope that he's not thinking for one minute that I'll be polishing it. Oblivious to James's intentions is client Rob, who's awaiting news on the sale of his armour. The horse arm is the last, more or less the last thing I've got left. He's looking for £4,000 for the bespoke suit and horse to help him move out of his static caravan. I've got to sell it. I've got to get rid of it and move on. And, you know, carry on with my plans, basically. All right, let's give Rob a call. I'm hoping he probably won't even accept. Hello? Rob, it's James from Prestige. Hi, James. Look, I'm sorry it's taken so long with your uh, your armour. It's been a real yeah. roller coaster ride of emotions. We thought we'd sold it, we didn't sell it, then yeah. we thought we'd sold it again. And yeah. But look, I've got some news. I fancy having it for myself, to be honest with you, in the shop. <laughs> It's become a bit of a tourist attraction <laughs> down here. <laughs> so, look, Excellent. I don't know how you feel, but would 3,750 quid buy it? I was open for at least four, you know. Yeah, I know you wanted a bit more, but... I'm trying to get out of this caravan. Winter's coming. <laughs> no, I understand that. It's just that I wouldn't mind it here. It's uh, yeah. become part of the furniture here, really. Yeah, well, that's it. And it would make a good mascot, you know. It does. Um, so, 3750 Yeah, I guess so, yeah. That's good. You'll take I mean, it. I've got to be realistic. I think that just people out there spending that sort of money on suits of armour are pretty thin on the ground at the moment, yeah. what with everything that's going on. <laughs> So, yeah. if you're happy with that, that's lovely. I'll get it yeah, all... I'll get the money pinged over to you and uh, we'll sort it out. Is that all right? Thanks for your help, James. Cheers, Appreciate mate. It. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye, Bye. Yes. Oh, wow. Well. I'm happy with James's offer. You know, it's a realistic offer, I suppose. Um, there's not many people out there for this, you know, suit of armour and it's not going to fit in your average living room, is it? Let's face it. Whilst you've been in that loo, I've actually purchased the armour. But how much have you paid for it? Or is it a secret? Because I'm sure you... you give her anything for it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let's hope you can get a bit more than a <laughs> back. I'm happy. I think Rob's happy. And uh, hopefully in time, Joe will be happy as well. You're all mine. James might be pleased with his deal, but will Jo be satisfied with the news Lawrence has for her about her treasured jewellery? I'm excited, but I'm nervous at the same time because a, lot sort of a lot's riding on it. After a recent breakup, she's looking for £20,000 to start a new life abroad. I must admit, when Jo first walked through the door, um, first thing she showed me was a gold watch and my heart sank. If we don't get the right price that I need for the items, then, yeah, definitely going definitely to hold on to them. They're too special to let go for the wrong, wrong amount of money. Luckily, the ring came out. As soon as I cleaned it up, I realised this was the jewel in the crown. So, you know, we've got my figures now together. You know, I've discussed it with James, and we're going to make her an offer, and I hope she's happy with it. Joe, it's for you. OK, one sec. Hello? Hello, Joe. How are you? It's Lawrence from Prestige. Oh, hi, Lawrence. How are you? I'm good, thank, thank you very much. Good. Nice to hear from yeah. you. Well, I must admit, when you first bought your items in, I was a little bit sort of... My heart went to my chest slightly. OK. Now, unfortunately, the watch, the, the Amiga... Yeah. I knew straight away you'd only really be looking at the scrap value. Right, OK. Because of the age of it, it's a vintage yeah. piece, it's a, we're going to be a bit of a struggle. I got slightly more excited with the Batik Philippe, but it was a gorgeous watch. And again, with the ring, when I first saw it, I thought, ooh, ooh, are we going to get there? I took it straight downstairs and we cleaned it up and it's come up like a true jewel in the crown. Has it really? Oh, uh, but it deserved to be. What's the figure you really need to, to achieve this dream of yours? I'm looking at about 20. So well, what's the minimum you take on it? 18 to 20 is what I'm really I'm looking for. But... What are you thinking? Well, I've got a figure for you. I've discussed it with James. We're both happy to go with it. OK. And you're looking at, we'll... we we'll buy all three of them as a parcel for 18000 How do you feel about that? All oh, right, OK. I'm excited, actually. That's good. Um, I'm really happy with 
happy with that. Oh, good. Oh, that's, um, yeah. It's it's, a bit of a relief to you, so it is a little, Yeah, it is a little bit. I've been ever so nervous, I'll be honest. Oh. Um, a bit worried about it. Lawrence, that's fantastic news. Oh, fantastic. Lovely. Thank you so much. Cheers, I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch. Thanks a lot, Joe. Thank Joe. you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Same to you. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Um, they've offered me 18 for the three, which has made me go a little bit like that. Yeah, which is fantastic. She actually wanted between 18 and 20, and we've offered her the 18, so that's one happy lady. So that means the dream of going back to Spain um, and opening, you know, another business and starting a new life is definitely, definitely a possibility now. So, yeah, over the moon, really, really, really chuffed. I'm pleased. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm the Grim Reaper giving out bad news, and today I've given out some really good news so someone can achieve a really nice dream, so pretty good. Sleep well tonight. <laughs>